Rivals have gone through a bit of an identity crisis in the Pokemon series. Serving as a series staple since the games first released back in 1996, these companion characters can play a key role in the player's journey. That is, when done correctly. You see, as the franchise expands, so does its definition of a rival character, with early examples of blue and silver from generations 1 and 2 respectively. These rivals served as driving points for the player as they mirrored your journey to take down the Pokemon League. However, a trend originating from Generation 3 onward was the concept of a friendly rival. That is, someone who lines up more with your beliefs and practices as a trainer, or maybe just doesn't even share the same goals in your journey. And as later installments introduced further ideas of having to juggle multiple different characters, the ways of the past seem to be lost to time. While not wholly on board with this change, I didn't see it as a greater issue for the series, instead just hoping that the fabled next generation would return to form. That is, of course, until the marketing run for the Pokemon Yellow remakes of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee kicked off. In the trailers for these games, and displaying one of the new features for the title, Newcomer Trace is announced with that one key term, Friendly Rival. Seeing that the concept had made its way into the effective remakes of this old school title, seemingly replacing or at least reducing the role that Blue had played before, I started thinking about what makes a good rival in these games. All in all, I think it comes down to one key word, hate. We should hate our rivals because those feelings provide the strongest frame of reference the player can have to the impact and growth from their journey. Hey all you well-natured battlers out there, I'm Skip the Tutorial and this is Boss Battle Breakdown. A deep dive into the ins and outs, and in this case the themes, of boss design. And hey, if this is your first time here, make sure to throw a Pokeball Plus on that subscribe for weekly insights into your favorite bosses. Now, one of the reasons I think it's crucial for us to despise our rivals is because they represent the opposite ideology in a logical way. Whereas the evil crime syndicates of these games show off the pure evil of these stories, and are always unsuccessful because of it, these rivals can be so compelling because they actually achieve measures of success in their methods while Blue and Silver, or whatever you decided to name them, I won't judge, represent a somewhat immoral strive to get stronger by all means necessary, they progress in their journeys at a rate that can even eclipse the main character. Just took down the second gym? Well, sure enough, Blue did too, and he's happy to let you know about it. This constant chasing feeling gives considerable weight to their methods, since clearly, they're paying off. For these very reasons, when it's revealed that Blue beat the Elite Four before you and now reigns champion, it's impactful. He bested you and his methods were apparently right. Contrast this with a similar situation in the Sun and Moon games, where you battle your buddy Hao before claiming your spot as champion. But beating him isn't any measure of a great victory, since ultimately, he stands for a lot of the same values as you. He's easygoing, sometimes a laughably simplistic character who suffers loss after loss within his own journey because he values kindness and friendship so gosh darn much. He doesn't represent the success of an alternative cause, but more so the shortcomings of your own. All that taking him down does is prove that your strategy can work to an agreeing audience, and consequently lacks to reach the same emotional weight of beating Blue. Another note to touch on here is that these characters don't always have to be hated. In fact, I'd argue that through these lower moments in their personality, they're given proper room to grow and have an arc in the gameplay and story. Sure, Silver's a thief and an easy target to hate when you first run against him, but that makes the glimpses into his troubled past hit even harder. Feeling the empathy of how this misaligned kid ended up to where he is, you can see why he shoots for strength in the way that he does. And through battling against him throughout your journey, show him the rewards of having positive relationships with others. The respect he gains for your character through that shows how the shared role you both played in each other's stories developed the two of you into better trainers. In the same line, Blue, by all means, is a jerk over the course of your rivalry. But beating his sorry face in the championship shows him that he's wrong, and sets him along the path of change we see in the Generation 2 state of Kanto. Taking a humble space as a gym leader within the league, he still pursues battling, but now in a more respectable light, accepting that he's not the best, yet still keeping with his passion. Heck, he's even better friends with Red, as we see when encountering the two over in Alola. It's a friendship that holds water because it wasn't immediate, but both characters developed and strengthened it through learning from the differences of the other making it feel earned that they're closer. This is why it means something to get to see these characters again. Blue's progression to being a gym leader is much more impactful than seeing Sharon do the same thing from black and white to their sequels, since the former gains the player's respect from their prior hatred, instead of just being told to give it in the first place. And the big thing here is, they know this. Switching our focus over to the anime's Diamond and Pearl seasons, we see that instead of maintaining the primary rivalry of Barry as they did in the games, the big role of Ash's opponent is instead given to Paul, 
the purple-haired resident from Veilstone City. Admittedly, both characters do still appear in the show, and even feature the same power-focused ideology, with Barry idolizing Paul's tactics. But despite this, it's easy to see the flaws in this strategy through Paul's shortcomings of being arrogant and abusive towards his Pokemon, even going so far as to release his own beast if they're too weak to achieve his goal, as opposed to Barry, who's just the same overly energetic, boisterous kid that he is in the video games. And as is the pattern here, making him into this parallel universe protagonist with questionable morals gives each battle he has with Ash, particularly their final face-off, a large amount of tension and excitement. By making this character into someone we all can hate, in the end, he ends up being someone we can love, or at the very least respect for his growth over the course of the story. Looking into the future, these later rivals of coming generations should be designed with every intention for the player to dislike them. And make no mistake here, although I say them, I really do think that it's best to limit the rival down to one central character. Otherwise, the arcs and motivations can just get jumbled. Look at the overabundance of rival matchups and X and Y for that one where no one battle really gets to hold the same weight as it would with just one rival. As well, they should start their journey out the gate in sync with you, so the two characters can stay neck and neck throughout the course of the Pokemon League challenge. While not completely necessary, keeping these other trainers one step ahead of the main character can provide a compelling driving force through the gameplay to push them toward their goal. And most importantly of all, give that ever needed realization in their story's conclusion. As through the central elements of battling in the game, you finally prove to them the proper way of training. Because after all, the protagonist is just a smiling blank slate throughout these titles, and their progression can only truly be shown through their impact on others. So Game Freak, give us someone to hate. And while it might not come in the form of Trace, I'll be anxiously waiting for another jerk to prove wrong come Generation 8. Hey there, hope you're enjoying this set of Pokemon themed videos for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee's release. To see what makes a great Pokemon gym leader, tail whip this one up in the top right, or flamethrower down in the bottom right for another video. I'll see you over there. Take care, and you have a good one, alright?